Hey guys, how you doing today? Uh, I'm inside today because it's just bloody windy today. It's incredible. Uh, you can say hi to my little pug. Hello, little pugaroo. Yeah, he's a sweetheart. He might whine at me in the middle of this, so I might have to pause for a minute, but please forgive me. Uh, okay. What I want to talk about today, and what I'm very interested in talking about, is Jordan Peterson. Uh, Jordan Peterson has this moment, uh, uh, an important cultural moment, honestly, where... Uh, he realizes that the villain Red Skull in the Marvel comics is being written to espouse his ideas. Uh, you can go to Jordan Peterson's Twitter feed and see this. You can you can see. In fact, I'll actually just put up the the, the key picture. Right, like here's Red Skull outright saying, uh, "Order and chaos." 10 rules for life, right? Like, th these are Jordan Peterson-isms. These are Petersonian, right? Like, without w without a doubt. Um, and Peterson is, of course, aghast at this and spends the rest of the day uh, confronting this by showing all of, all of the times that people have mocked his work, right? All of the times. Because he believes that he's on the side of good, right? But the reality is, and the shame that the thing that is a shame and the great tragedy of Jordan Peterson's life and his life work is that Jordan Peterson is a villain, right? Villains never ever see that they are uh, that they are villains. They never actually acknowledge it. They never actually pay attention. Uh, they 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 always believe that they are doing the right thing. They always believe that they are on the side of good. And if they do something evil or that can be con construed as wrong, they always pull out the uh, the argument that, oh, it's for the greater good, right? We do this evil now for the greater good. This is this is a consistent argument across all villains, <laughs> all of the great villains in history, and so, Jor and Jordan Peterson is no exception to this. And so you're seeing a portrait of a fellow who is coming to terms with his own villainy, or at least the idea that there are many people in the society who consider him a villain. And where does this villainy come from? Where does it stem from? Uh, to me, Jordan Peterson's primary villainy is that he has no internal self-critique. He uh, uh, Not only does he have no self-critique of himself, he has no self-critique of uh, the system that he is defending. And this is why it ultimately doesn't work, and this is why it ultimately doesn't fail. Is that, uh, Or rather, that it does fail. Uh, and it turns away from something that is helping the society to something that is holding the society back. Jordan Peterson is uh, a... a a hierarchical sort of purist, right? He believes in the hierarchy, uh, that the the patriarchy uh, is a system, uh, the uh, hereditary patriarchy is a system that has been uh, in place for thousands of years. He believes that it's a natural phenomenon that brings order from chaos. Uh, and uh, uh, oh, the key, the there's like a linchpin there that I'm completely blanking on the higher oh yes and and, and the judeo-christian tradition within that yes that's very crucial to jordan peterson and understanding jordan peterson is the judeo-christian uh hierarchical patriarchal system that he is supporting right or uh uh and what is odd within this is that he actually doesn't take any amount of time to critique uh, his the capitalist system, right? If you read his work and if you look at his work and if you look at what he's saying or any of this kind of stuff, he never talks about capitalism. It doesn't exist, right? That he sees the world as structured along these natural lines of hierarchy and uh, patriarchy in the Judeo-Christian tradition, of course, and that this is correct. This is the central source of his villainy, right? This is the central source of his villainy and why he will ultimately be seen as a villain in the world. Um, it, it doesn't, I'm, I'm not 
joyful about this, right? Jordan Peterson, and I, I actually rather like Jordan Peterson as a person, right? I like hearing him speak. He's he he like me is a prairie boy. He's from Alberta. I'm from Manitoba, right? Uh, I read his book, 12 Rules for Life. I actually found it quite helpful for myself in the time that I was in and in the place that I was at. Uh, because ultimately he is just trying to be a no-nonsense, straightforward, shoot from the hip, you've got to do it yourself kind of a guy. And I don't think that there's naturally anything wrong with that. I don't think there is anything wrong with telling, especially young men, but anyone really, that... You do have to, if you want to get that thing done, you have to do it. And it's up to you, right? And in many ways, I think that this YouTube channel is uh, partially inspired by that kind of gusto and that kind of good that Peterson gives. And, and of course, this is all, I was completely content with reading Jordan Peterson uh, as sort of a self-help sort of a fellow. Just, just a guy who was coming, giving you a shot in the arm and saying, come on, buck up, you can do it, right? And if that's where you, if that's where you take Peterson, if that's as far as you, your relationship with Peterson goes, then that's great. That That's great. And and uh, I think he would generally be happy to hear that. And if he, if he does hear this from me, uh, and I hope one day I do get to say to him, I found him quite helpful uh, as one prairie boy to another. The issue, of course, that comes with Peterson is when he attempts to take a wider critique of the society that he lives in. Um... So, for example, right, his critique, if you want to call it, of Marxism, uh, was, is a big reason why I became a communist, right? His critique of communism and Marxism was childish. And it was obviously childish, right? He would say things like Marxists are evil. He would say things like communism is a disaster system that always fails. Like It's like straight up 1950s propaganda. And really, really obvious that he had done no research. He had done, he had no ideas on these lines. That he literally was just regurgitating the propaganda that was coming out of the society. And it was this critique that really began my kind of analysis of Peterson uh, with a more skeptical eye. He ceased to become a good old boy, right? He ceased to be just like, oh, you know, like uh, uh, another Manitoba boy, right? And I began to more critically analyze him. Uh, and it really became very obvious that Peterson's great failing and Peterson, what will lead to Peterson's villainy is his lack of self-analysis, right? And no more was this obvious than his uh, debate that he had with uh, Slozhov Zizek, right? Uh, Peterson was going around the social media, like he would go on Joe Rogan, right? And he would say things like, uh, oh, Marxists won't debate me, right? Which is a flat lie, like obviously false. There were many, more, like uh, uh, Richard Wolff has this story where he talks about uh, how Jordan Peterson uh, dodges him in debates, right? And the reason why Jordan Peterson would dodge a man like Richard Wolff is because Richard Wolff knows what he's talking about and uh, Jordan Peterson doesn't, right? Like uh, uh, on the lead up to this debate with Slozhov Zizek, and Slozhov Zizek is, like, pretty low level, if you ask me, right? Like, he, he has a following on YouTube, he's very successful, and he, and he is the man that he is, uh, 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 and a stalwart defender of Marxism and communism, right? But uh, he's not, like, it's, it's not, it wasn't, like, a high-profile, insane debate. And it was very obvious that, like, Peterson's critique of communism was... Uh, extremely rudimentary and childish, right? He literally read the literature the night before. Like, it, it, it takes a great deal of arrogance to do that sort of thing, to to literally read the subject matter the, the night before you're going to have a debate with anybody about anything and, and expect that to be taken seriously. And Peterson... His statements of hierarchy, his statements of uh, of uh, um, of patriarchy, right? Well, 
you can say that they're historically there and you can say that they're part of the historical record, but if you ignore the self-critique that these things are based on violence, that these things are based on, first and foremost, the enforcement through violence, uh, and then if you don't talk about the capitalist structure and how it is based on a system of wage slavery and that the benefits that we have uh, come from a long, hard labor struggle, uh, then you can basically just say what you want, right? Like Peterson, I think, is a very intelligent person. But because there are these obvious, overt, and large gaps, not only a gap in his knowledge base, but a gap in his willingness to accept that there are gaps in his knowledge base, uh, it allows him to believe this uh, ideology that ends up acting very much like the ideology of a death cult, right? And I started to say that Jordan Peterson was an acolyte for the death cult when he started to say, oh no, the climate change thing is in hand. It's not that big a deal, right? You can go on YouTube and find him saying this, that, oh, climate change isn't that big a deal. <laughs> like, that's supervillain level territory, right? Like, that's the level of territory. Like, why is Jordan Peterson saying that the most crucial and critical and devastating existential crisis of our lifetime uh, is not a problem. Why is he saying that? And it's because the climate crisis is being generated by the system that he defends, uh, but ultimately doesn't have a self-critique of and doesn't actually know anything about, right? Peterson doesn't actually know anything about uh, capitalism and how it functions. He doesn't actually understand that workers sell themselves to uh, whoever they can find, right? Or if he does understand it, he just believes that this is the natural order of things and that this is a natural good, right? That he would fit in very, very comfortably with the divine right of kings crowd, right? Like that he would fit in very comfortably with a monarchist saying like, no, the king, it, this is the natural order of things that uh, the king brings order to the kingdom, and without the king, there would be chaos, right? Like, Jordan Peterson would fit in perfectly with uh, uh, monarchists and, and the divine rights of kings and all of these sorts of things. He would, uh, uh, and of course, the king and the court and all the people who benefit from the divine right of kings and the divine right of rule would uh, uh, propagate his... Uh, statements around, just like the news, like this is why Jordan Peterson became popular, because you have CNN and Fox News and, and BBC and all of these places who want uh, this narrative that, oh, uh, corporate capitalism is just the natural order of things, right? Corporate capitalism is just how things are supposed to be structured, right? That's how we get order from chaos, right? But when you actually look like, what's this order that Jordan Peterson is talking about? Well, the order that Jordan Peterson is talking about is withholding food and shelter from people, right? Withhold food and shelter from people uh, unless they sell themselves to a market that's dominated by billionaires, right? That's the system we live in. That's the actual critique of the system that we live in. That each and every one of us does not get food, does not get shelter, those things have been withheld from us by our society, which gives them or has given them to wealthy billionaires who dominate the marketplace that we're supposed to then sell ourselves into in order to get food and shelter. That's the system we live in. And you will never, ever, 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 ever hear Jordan Peterson admit that that's the truth or acknowledge the existence of that fact. Because if he were to actually acknowledge those things and then continue to argue in favor of them, his villainy would be overt and obvious, even to him, right? Even to him. That's the thing, that Jordan Peterson, he'll say things like tell the truth. He'll say these things, but he doesn't tell the truth to himself. 
right? He doesn't acknowledge the reality of the structure of his own system. And any uh, uh, paradoxes or any contradictions that arise between uh, his own belief in a hierarchical power structure uh, and the uh, horrible outcomes that they uh, uh, that occur, he can just shrug and say, oh, well, it's just the natural order of things, right? He doesn't need to actually talk about things like reform. He doesn't actually need to think about other systems or other ways of being. He doesn't actually need to study history. He doesn't actually need to understand any of that kind of stuff because he can always just shrug and cede all intellectual authority to the idea that, ah, this is the natural order of things. This is the heart of his super villainy, right? This is the heart of Jordan Peterson's villainy, that he can ultimately just look at the horrors of the world. He can ultimately just look at the evils that his own system is perpetrating, right? He can look at the evils that his own system is perpetrating and just shrug and say, that's the natural order of things. So you better just pull yourself up by your bootstraps uh, and fight for what you want, right? And of course... And of course he believes this, uh, and he, uh, uh, his whole life is working with people in order for them to do exactly this, which he claims with great success and aplomb, right? Forgetting completely that the only people who can afford his services are the people who are already wealthy in the first place, right? Forgetting completely that the system that he is defending generates homelessness, generates poverty, generates catastrophe, right? Uh, and propagates itself through not only the theft of time and productivity of its own citizenry, but by invading and destroying other countries and stealing their resources, right? That this is how capitalism has always propagated itself, always, since its inception, and it is how it will continue to. And and Jordan Peterson is is one of its major defenders. So yeah, of course he should be considered a villain, Right? Of course he should be considered a villain, and the great heartbreak and the great tragedy tragedy of Jordan Peterson is that uh, he doesn't understand that about himself. He doesn't understand that his lack of, of self-awareness and his lack of uh, uh, internal critique of his own system, uh, his refusal to actually look at the own, his own system, that he is defending and actually attempt to critique it in any meaningful way turns him into something of a capitalist fundamentalist. One that has to say, by the very nature of, of anything, that, uh, of course my system's the greatest, right? Of course my system's the greatest. It rewards me completely. It rewards me completely. So of course my system's the greatest. And, and this critique of Jordan Peterson, right, that he lacks self-awareness, extends even to his own personal life, right? That, uh, I mean, we have seen it in the, uh, like, the guy ends up in a coma, for goodness sakes, because he's, like, on an all-meat diet, right? Like, this, this, this unfortunate, and it is an unfortunate situation, I don't want to make light of it. Uh, he ends up in a kind of drug addiction sort of position, right? Like, but what can be cleanly said about that kind of thing for Jordan Peterson is that you end up in these sorts of positions when you lack a certain level of self-awareness. And the idea, like, Peterson seems to believe that his own life experience is the universal experience, right? And and that's sort of endemic of many cons conservatives that I run into, that, well, I went to school when school was extremely cheap, uh, and I paid my own way when one could work a part-time job and have an apartment and then also go to school on top of that. Uh, and so you must just be lazy and need to pull yourself up and stand up straight with your shoulders back. Uh, meanwhile, any millennial will be like, um, we get plunged into like $50,000 worth of debt for a bachelor's degree. Uh, and, and, and it's a degree, then we turn around and we can't get a job in the workplace. Oh, and by the way, to pay for rent, you have to have a full-time job, right? You have to have a full-time job. And so this disconnect and this inability to actually see that, like Peterson doesn't acknowledge any of that, 
Like that's not real. It's it, to, to Jordan Peterson. It's just no. You got to pull yourself up and you got to keep going. You got to keep fighting, right? And that's 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 how you achieve. And anybody who falls back and falls into poverty and falls into despair and desperation because of the structure of the system that he refuses to critique, that's just the natural order of things, and that's just the way it's supposed to be. Life has suffering in it, right? You just have to accept it. Well, I don't. I don't, right? I don't accept this villainous narrative that says that people should be abandoned because we refuse to do a structural analysis of the society we lived in. If that was the position that we took as a people, we'd still have kings, right? We'd still have kings if we were doing that. We shouldn't, right? We shouldn't. We should take a look at someone like Jordan Peterson, who I have a great deal of pity for, and say, uh, no, you are a villain. You are fighting on the wrong side. You want, you want people to be homeless. You want people to be poor. You want people to be desperate. And you want to denigrate them for those things, right? What is that but a villain? What is that but a villain, right? And, and to protect his position, he often just falls back into magical thinking and fantasy, right? Like, he often, like, his, his statements against the feminist movement, right, are literally just a belief in magic. It's just him saying that, no, the patriarchy has always been good because magic is real. And there's no genuine critique there. Like, oh no, the idea that women should uh, uh, be considered equals in the society. Or, <laughs> like, and, and this lack of self-awareness that Jordan Peterson has, right? Like, anytime he starts talking about race relations or any of this sort of thing, it's like, dude, like... Like, George Floyd got murdered in the streets. There was, like, a big riot about it. And you're pretending, like, oh, we should talk about race relations because, like, oh, we need to, you know, black black people have higher heart issues. Like, no. Like, you, you can't be so unaware of what's happening in the society to, to, to say the things that you say. But, and yet he is. And so either he has this... Uh, a sinister agenda underneath or and i think this is absolutely true i think he's just kind of been hoodwinked by his own society right he's bought into the propaganda he's bought into the idea that capitalism is the greatest system ever created he's bought into these sorts of things while completely ignoring and completely forgetting that his own successes and his uh, his own um his own career and it, like his own experience of the society is completely predicated on government handouts. Uh, the the Can Canada Dominion Act is the reason his family has land, right? If you were a Canadian, or sorry, if you were a Brit emig uh, immigrating into Canada and you moved out to the prairies, you got 360 acres of free land. 360 acres of free land. That's how Jordan Peterson's family got their, got their wealth, without a doubt. That's how it happened. Uh, and sure, they worked hard, and sure, there was a lot of that, but they worked hard on 360 acres of free land that they were given, right? How do I know this narrative? Because this is the narrative of my family, and this is the narrative of every prairie family. That's the great sadness and the great irony of uh, the conservative movement generally, is that they're all living on free land given to them by the government, complaining about government handouts, Right. Like, you can tell people that you should work hard all you want, but if you're doing it from the position that Jordan Peterson is doing it from, then you're a hypocrite and a villain. And that's the deep misfortune of uh, that if he was to look at even his own family history, he would figure this out. And, uh, but he doesn't, because he has no critical self-analysis, nor does he have a critical analysis of his own society, right? And if he were to attempt to create these things his own villainy would become overt, right? That's why he doesn't do it. That's why he doesn't actually do it. That's why he doesn't critique the society. That's why he doesn't critique himself. Because if he was actually to do those things and state what I have just stated overtly, then his villainy would be obvious to even him, right? 
<laughs> you want people to be homeless, you want people to be in poverty, you want people to be starving, you want them to sell themselves to a class of billionaires who are sociopaths and who have proven over and over again that they're willing to destroy whoever they want uh, and invade whatever they want and abandon whoever they want, right? You're a villain. There's no, there's no other word to use. And so the writers of uh, uh, Marvel Comics have rightly chosen uh, Red Skull to be the avatar of this, that uh, Jordan Peterson uh, is going to go down in history as one of the great Canadian villains. Um, yeah. It's a shame, too, because I actually think Peterson is an intelligent person. We could use him on our side, right? We could use somebody with with uh, uh, his intelligence actually doing real work. But he that's not really what he's interested in. Okay, this is the end of this video. Uh, I hope you guys are doing really well out there, okay? Like, the capitalist class will spend billions and billions and billions and billions and billions of dollars to gaslight you. They will take people like Jordan Peterson and they'll put them in front of your face, right? And they'll use him as like this avatar for like, this is what you should be doing when really he's like a supervillain who's just attempting to convince you that you're, uh, you're the problem, right? Certainly not the structure you live in, certainly not the wage slave society that we've erected, right? That's not a problem. And, and in fact, we're not even going to talk about that. That's not even an issue, right? And they'll spend billions of dollars to gaslight you, and they'll spend billions of dollars to continue propagating this narrative. Don't let them, right? Don't believe them. Uh, always be skeptical of them, 100% of the time. You're doing wonderfully. You're doing great. Good luck. We're going to need it.